Hello everyone, my name is Mohammad Azmal. I'm the founding engineer of iMesh. And in this session, we'll have a look at Istio Sidecar versus Istio Ambient Mesh. So the agendas are here as follows. So first we'll explore the Istio Sidecar architecture. Then we'll understand what are the challenges with the Sidecar model. We'll have a look at Istio Ambient Mesh architecture. We'll uh, have an understanding of what is Z-Tunnel and Waypoint proxies that are used in the Ambient Mesh. And uh, lastly, we'll conclude with the benefits of Istio Ambient Mesh. So let's begin uh, with Istio Sidecar architecture. So uh, here we have an example of a standard Kubernetes pod, uh, which is running a particular app in a container. Now, once the namespace is Istio injection enabled, Istio starts injecting the Envoy proxies inside the pods. Now, as a result, uh, what the number of pods we have, each one of them is going to be injected with the Envoy proxy and the traffic internally to the pod will be routed through Envoy proxies. And the Envoy proxies themselves are uh, uh, connected with each other. They have the networking capabilities to talk to each other. So whenever the pod in the left is trying to communicate with the pod in the right, the uh, communication flow is from app container to the Envoy proxy of pod one. Then it goes to the Envoy proxy of pod two, which internally forwards the request to uh, the app container. And all the telemetry L7, L4, everything is handled at Envoy proxy level only. Istio also supports MTLS, so if you enable it, the communication between the Envoy proxies is going to be MTLS enabled. Now, uh, the Envoy proxies themselves are called the data plane, and we have Istio D, which is the control plane that manages the pod injection and all those things related to the entire service mesh. Here are a few challenges with the sidecar model. Firstly, since we have seen that each pod in a, a cluster has to be injected with Envoy proxies, that results in a pretty high CPU and memory utilization. As you can see, if you have thousands or maybe tens of thousands of pods in a particular cluster, which is to enable, it can get pretty overwhelming and pretty intensive at the same time. Workload disruption is also another issue that needs to be addressed here. Since the site, uh, Envoy proxy is injected inside the pod, when you inject the sidecar or when you upgrade the sidecar or any other things that's going to happen there, the pod restarts. And uh, this is one of the issues because in order to update uh, a particular ver for to a particular version of Envoy proxy, you need to restart the entire cluster in, in terms that all the pods are going to be restarted. Since all the L4 and L7 capabilities are handled by the Envoy proxies, so even if you want a simple feature of L4 and MTLS, you have to take the entire bundle in and that results in a fixed operational cost. And it's very tough to plan because if you have a lot of pods and you're injecting Envoy proxies there, all you need is MTLS, it's going to be pretty heavy. Now in comes the Istio Ambient Mesh and Istio Ambient Mesh is the newer and much faster way to Istio. So it is sidecarless. You do not have uh, the pain of injecting Envoy proxies to each and every pod in your cluster. It is pretty lightweight since we do not have sidecar injections. It is faster because it involves two special components that we are going to talk about. And it comes with all the Istio capabilities that you have seen in the sidecar based mesh. Now let's have a look at the special ingredients in ambient mesh. The first one is Z tunnel, which stands for zero trust tunnel. It handles all the node level proxy implementations, MTLS and L4 processing. Anything related to L4 is done by Z-Tunnel. And then we have the Waypoint proxy, which is also the Envoy proxy itself, which is deployed per namespace or service account level. And all the L7 capabilities, L7 processing, networking, traffic management, metrics and logging is done by the Waypoint proxy. Now the architecture of Z-Tunnel and Istio Ambient Mesh is as follows. Now Z-Tunnel is not deployed or injected to each and every pod, rather it is a daemon that runs on every particular node. Now all your services uh, that are present in a particular node, that traffic is going to be interpreted by the Z-Tunnel. The Z-Tunnel itself is going to communicate with another node using the Z-Tunnel of the other node. And this communication is uh, connected through MTLS and it is a HTTPS connection tunnel. Now the Waypoint proxy comes in whenever you need it. If there are services that need the L7 capabilities, you can inject Waypoint proxies per service account level or namespace level. Since these are regular Kubernetes pod, this can be scaled up and down as and when you like. The network flows uh, from Z-Tunnel to the Waypoint proxy whenever 
an L7 uh, uh, requirement is there. The Z tunnel, instead of directly connecting to the other Z tunnel, would pass the request through the waypoint proxies and then it will go to the other Z tunnel and as a result it will pass into the internal services. The uh, Istio Ambient Mesh takes care of all these networking capabilities so you don't have to explicitly mention that transfer the traffic from Z tunnel to waypoint proxy then to the other Z tunnel. It's taken care uh, internally with Istio. By looking at the Ambient Mesh architecture, you would have thought there are tons of benefits of using it. And you're right, let's have a look at a few of them in this session. We'll see how it improves the performance and operational efficiency. So uh, the Ambient Mesh itself is pretty modularly built as the L4 and L7 responsibilities are dealt differently. If MTLS is all you need, then just have the Z tunnels. You don't even need to inject the waypoint proxies. It gives you a choice to use whatever you like. We have a pretty reduced resource overhead since we do not have to inject the sidecars to each and every pods that are present in the cluster. Since there are no sidecars, there is no sidecar lifecycle management which makes it even faster and performant. As a result, we have a reduced latency since the network hops, even though we are using waypoint proxies in between, is opt-in and the entire traffic is passing through the Z-tunnel which is pretty high performance and rust based uh, so yeah the speed comes with it we do get a better isolation for our uh, workloads that are running in the cluster since the ambient mesh components run outside the application pods there is no need of restarting the pods in case of any updates or any other issues z tunnel runs at node level and the waypoint proxies even though run at a lamespace level are completely independent pods and do not result in restarting our existing application. There is no workload disruption as well since there is no modification and restarting of workloads because we do not have a sidecar. There is no modification of the uh, existing workloads while we are updating these eternal waypoint proxies. They can be independently updated. There is no internal traffic uh, disruption as we have seen in the sidecar where Envoy Proxy intercepts the traffic inside the pod. We do get those traffic interceptions but it is definitely outside the pods and does not affect our workloads running inside that. So this is a quick summary of what we have just seen. The Istio mesh is pretty heavyweight because of the sidecars and the ambient mesh on the other hand is pretty lightweight. Both of them are highly scalable but you can see the performance overhead is a, a, a performance improvement is there in ambient mesh and also cost efficiency is there with ambient mesh. The performance is definitely slower in case of Istio mesh because a lot of sidecars are going to be injected to each and every pods if you're running a variety of workloads and a large number of workloads. In case of ambient mesh, even though the workloads number could be high, it depends on the number of nodes where you have the Z tunnel and uh, uh, the number of waypoint proxies depending on whatever services require L7. However, the Istio, MB, Istio service mesh, the sidecar one, is uh, still in stable release. It is being used in a lot of production uh, uh, architectures. And ambient mesh is in beta now, and it is expected to be stable uh, by the next year, probably by the month of March, if I'm not wrong. The multi-cloud and multi-cluster support and setup is better in Istio Mesh uh, as compared to the Ambient Mesh where it is pretty limited and the same goes for the VM support but however we can expect those things to change in future once Ambient Mesh is being developed rigorously and it comes towards the stable release in 2024. Despite Ambient Mesh being relatively new, we provide enterprise support for both Istio Mesh and Istio Ambient Mesh. If you want to learn more about Ambient Mesh, we'll provide a link in the description to get started with Ambient Mesh on Kubernetes, implement L4 and L7 policies through Z-Tunnel and Waypoint proxies. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day.